Good evening. The time is now 7.01 p.m. on March 27, 2023, and we're going to call the meeting to order. This is a public meeting of the City of Portland Police Accountability Commission <laughs> Subcommittee on Board Membership. Oops, one second. Lost my... Esta reunión es una junta pública bajo las leyes administrativas del estado de Oregon y la ciudad de Portland y será grabada. Interpretación en español está disponible para esta junta. Mientras accede la interpretación en español, va a haber la transmisión de video de las hablantes. Favor de darle clic en Language Interpretation localizado en la configuración de Zoom en la parte inferior de la pantalla y seleccione Spanish. Thank you. We have, um, thank you, Sasha and Valeria will be our Spanish language interpreters for the evening. Thank you. The city also offers ASL interpretation, which is being provided by Mary and Christine. Please pin their video feed to see their interpretation throughout the meeting. The closed captioning is turned on in Zoom as another means of assistance, but please note that this is an automatic captioning, captioning service and it is not always accurate. The city supports access to meetings of all of the Police Accountability Commission and can provide other languages support as well. Please email in advance of future public meetings, either as a response to a public meeting notice or directly to policeaccountability at portlandoregon.gov to ask for other access assistance, including interpretation into other languages. This meeting is a public meeting subjected to City of Portland Administrative Code and Oregon State Law, and it is being recorded. For this meeting, the chat function is enabled for commission members to communicate with each other. Members of the public will be able to ask questions using the Zoom's Q&A feature. As the commissioners are presenting and or discussing things, if attendees have questions, please feel free to submit them through the Q&A. We hope to use this feature to help guide our conversation during the meeting and future meeting agenda topics. We'd like to be clear that all that not all questions will be answered during the meeting, but if answered, both the question and answer will be visible to you and will become part of the meeting record. To access this feature, just click on the Q&A icon in the middle of your screen. At this moment, I would like to turn it over to our co-chair, Tirsa, um, to discuss the land acknowledgement. Uh, thank you, Corrine. Uh, the Police Accountability Commission currently uses the land acknowledgement on display at City Hall, which reads, we acknowledge that the rivers, lakes, streams, and lands of the Lower Willamette River rest upon the occupied territories of the Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malala, and many other tribes. We recognize the many villages, traditions, cultures, and relationships that existed along the river since time immemorial. We recognize these tribes stewarded these lands and rivers since time immemorial for future generations. We recognize and undertake responsibility for the destruction of the river and land, of traditional food sources, sacred places, and multifaceted ways of life. We acknowledge the economic and social values that enable the harm to the river, including systemic racism, classism, and other systems of oppression that perpetuated harm against Black, Indigenous, and immigrant communities along the river. With this acknowledgement, we commit to honoring and learning from the past and working towards a more equitable and sustainable future for the Lower Willamette River. We commit to seeking solutions that acknowledge the inequities of past socioeconomic policies and the harm done to people and our relationships to these lands and waters. Thank you, co chair Tirsa. Now to the community agreements, part one.
Thank you. Part two. Thank you. Part three. Photo commit. Do we all commit to the following, the community agreements for today's meeting and to gently call it in our colleagues and collabor collaborators if needed? Thank you. I will pass it over to co-chair Tirsa to discuss the timeline. This meeting is a part of the Police Accountability Commission Structure and Detail Space of Work, which focuses on the form of the new system. Future, future phases of work will develop how the new system relates to the rest of the city government and the transition plan from our current system to the new one. The commission will present all proposed changes to the city council later in 2023 for their consideration and the approval. This slide shows the outcome uh, shows the outcome documents for the structure and details phase based on the agenda and scope approved by the commission. This subcommittee focuses on how the new oversight board's member will be structured, including appointment, possibility of reappointment, term length, criteria for selection, and training and onboarding. This slide is a current project plan for the structure and details phase of the Police Accountability Commission's work. Um, it is updated as needed throughout this phase of work. This slide is for members of the public to be able to understand how the commission gets from now through the end of the phase, which focuses on identifying areas of agreement among commission members as to the form of that the new system will take. Today's meeting is part of the light blue box with the red border uh, towards the middle of the screen. Following today here, are the upcoming meetings of the Police Accountability Commission. We'd like to highlight uh, this subcommittee, uh, subcommittee's next meeting will be uh, later this month on the uh, 27th. No, today is the 27th. Uh, will be um, on April 6th. There we go, um, April 6th. Um, and there is an open uh, police accountability community engagement event on Saturday, April 8th. Uh, police accountability commission subcommittee on oversight staff on April 10th. And then the police accountability commission will be meeting with Commissioner uh, Renee Gonzalez on Thursday, April 13th. Today's uh, meeting agenda includes time for members of the subcommittee to report, report back on what they've learned and developed since the meeting on March 9th. Um, after that, we will discuss items for uh, inclusion um, into our proposed uh, draft for uh, board membership. There will also be public comment as well as time for the subcommittee to plan out its work from now through its end of its next meeting. Thank you, Co-Chair Teresa. Um, at this moment, I would like to open the floor for the members and a co-chair to introduce their work from March 9th to today. Thank you. Co-chairs? Um. Are we able to show the uh, discussion slide? Possible, please. For just a second. Okay, so when we last met on uh, March 9th, um, 
we uh, members volunteer to work on uh, these items listed on here. And we have received um, some draft documents for um, for six out of the ninth listed here. Um, so we will um, review those in a bit. Um, but if there's any reporting back that any of the subcommittee members would like to share um, for anything that they came across while they um, were putting their draft documents together, that stood out. Next slide, please. Yeah, I think we can actually, yeah, just maybe go through uh, the documents, at least the ones that um, are here so far. Unfortunately, a couple of the members of the uh, subcommittee couldn't be here tonight, um, but I'll surely make it at the next meeting um, and we'll have things consolidated by then. But I think as a starting point, we could go through what we have now and uh, kind of get the discussion going, hopefully center our agreement and then uh, make it easy next time. Thanks. Guys. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. We will now move on to discussing items for the inclusion in the draft area areas of agreement on board membership and walk through the outline documents and some other resources as we do. We ask that you follow our normal discussion rules. Please be brief each time you speak, even though you can speak multiple times. Please be facilitated and remember that we use a weighted stack in our discussions. Finally, please be forward looking in your comments. Would the co-chairs like to get the discussion started? Sure. Um, so this is a document that uh, so far combines all of uh, the portions that we have so far received. Um, and um, yeah, we can uh, go ahead and move on to um, page two, and as a, well, I guess um, as a reminder for um, those who are new, uh, welcome Sherry, by the way. Uh, we, these are the contents that we are working on. Um, so size of the board uh, and panel size, qualifications and selection criteria, recruitment and appointment process, um, including representation, compensation, onboarding process and training, term length and renewability, removal requirements and process, and then a uh, quorum. So, uh, and then this list here um, lists the, the members that volunteer to work on these uh, portions. Um, Okay. So for um, number one at uh, size of the board and panel sizes, yes, there we go. Um, we have, um, and at any point, um, uh, members can um, interrupt or uh, comment on what they they um, believe or what they would like to see um, on this draft document. So for size of the board and panel sizes, uh, we have 25 um, subset of people that may be deals with appeals, officer accountability. Um, yeah, and that was, oh, sorry about that. I was just, uh, that, that was um, kind of like just notes from um, um, what I was thinking as I was going along and kind of doing my own sections. But I think the, uh, I imagine that the proposed um, number from um, our group is probably going to be somewhere around there. I was just using it as my own my own thoughts and uh, after discussions with a couple other people. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi staff. Yeah, so the just to to quickly um, contextualize this, there are eight sections. Um, there is somewhat expansive uh, text for five of them. The other three uh, were not yet sent in. And for example, number one is one of those where um, those those members are working on it or have worked on it. It just hasn't been incorporated into this document yet. 
So uh, that might be helpful to know that number one, number four, and number five, we don't yet have a lot of information for, but we'll have that by the next meeting and, and earlier than that um, from those members. Um, so that's why you see like number one is very, very short comparatively to um, two. And, and as you'll see the others that there are, there is text for it. So one, four, and five, um, there's less information for it, just to close that thought. Thank you, staff. Co-chairs? Yeah, no, th thank you, staff, for uh, kind of clarifying that. Um, yeah, but at any point, please, we should still be discussing them if you have an idea. So hopefully you can make the discussions next Thursday uh, more fluid. But yeah, I think some of the substantive stuff that's already here, we clearly can get more into the details on. But thank you, guys. Thank you. Are we going to cover what's in part two, qualifications and selection criteria? Are we going to move forward to that? Yes, and I'm happy to read over um, Thank you. this section. Um, so qualifications and selection criteria for makeup of the board. A, the advisory board shall have community members who have been impacted by over-policing practices. Um, B, the advisory board. <laughs> Board shall have community members that have worked with uh, populations directly affected by over policing. C, the advisory board shall have members who have experience with conducting investigations, case review, and auditing. Uh, the board shall have members who have experience doing community outreach. Um, it is important to center the voices of the community when implementing changes to the oversight board. Number two, oh, and I'll pause there if there's any. Yes, thank you. Do we have any comments, feedback, or any point of clarification? And section 2.1, makeup of the board. Um, Commissioner Obi, co-chair Obi. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's definitely a great um, um, first start. Um, it does seem like these practices sh should be, or these um, different uh, qualifications uh, of board members should definitely be something to consider. And I would definitely forward that, um, you know, people who have links to the community um, and people who are affected by overplacing, I think that's very, very reasonable too. Um, the, one of the things like to, it's, it's going to be a balance, I think. And I think once we have the numbers, uh, it'll be more apparent, but making sure that the board isn't like too of too much of like one thing versus or two pigeonholing itself into um, fitting a whole bunch of standards. Like we wouldn't want to inadvertently rule anyone out uh, being a board member. Um, you know, like, like lawyers are going to be great for the board, but like not having 20 lawyers and stuff or you know, certain members are going to be great for the board, not having certain many of them. Like, we'll need to take that into account as we go, because I think we're going to find a lot of things that we like in a diverse group of people. But we don't want to, like, make it too hard for someone who might not fit those perfect things to be inside of it, to, to be a board member. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Um, any commissioners, do you have any questions, feedback, comments, require any point of clarification? Okay, Mr. Casey. Casey? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'll get a little more into some of my, I, I completely agree with Obi, and I think there's a couple different ways to accomplish that. Um, and I'll get a little bit more into that when we've gone through a bit more of this section. But I will just say, as the resident lawyer of this subcommittee, uh, I completely agree that you do not want 20 lawyers. Thank you, Casey. Do we have any other comments? Can we move on to, to oh, Sherry? Yeah, um, can you hear me? Yes. I don't see myself on the screen. I'm not a tech wizard, you guys, please bear with me. Um, there was some commentary and I hope this is the right place to insert it at the last, um, it, last week, um, 
somebody, a member of the public brought up that it would be lovely if members of this board were, had like investigative backgrounds, but not necessarily in the area of police. Um, and one of the things that they were talking about was that insurance adjusters have a really great background as far as investigation go, but they're not necessarily geared towards finding a crime. They're just, it's not, it's not a police angle. It's a angle um, of somebody who can find information and investigate, but not necessarily a cop, which um, I think there's a consensus a lot of people will we're hoping to not have law enforcement on the board. So just my comment of what the public had stated. Thank you, Commissioner Sheree. Um, Co-Chair Obi. Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Sheree, for that comment as well. Um, I do think that, yeah, in the current system, um, some of the investi investigative people are insurance adjusters. Um, talking to uh, one of the CRC members, um, Mr. Delgado, it seems like, yeah, it would seem like that people with the good investigative skills like insurance adjusters would make a um good members whether or not it's in the board portion or the staff portion um yeah. i think both are reasonable but yeah no, that definitely well noted thank you thank you co-chair ob staff yeah so the conversation at the community engagement event certainly um also encompassed staff that's where that that came from whether or not so that that might be a you know uh, oversight staff subcommittee conversation, um, and and certainly uh, worthwhile to do. And then, um, with relation to the the question, um, in well, I guess it's being answered already. Disregard. Thanks. Thank you, staff. Can we move on to subject matter expert? Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, subject matter expertise, uh, the advisory board shall include people experienced with the police accountability uh, experience, legal knowledge, um, example, public defense lawyers or civil rights lawyers, or be other professional expertise shall also be considered. Thank you, co-chair Teresa. Do we have any comments, feedback, questions regarding subject matter expertise? Seeing that there's no hands raised, may we um, move forward to um, the Commissioner room? Casey, no hand? um, hands raised. Oh, Casey. I didn't see it. Thank you, um, um, facilitator. Uh, Casey, I know that this is kind of this is just sort of a broader discussion of subject matter expertise, and we'll get more into the weeds later. Um, but something I really think is important to have on this board in terms of subject matter expertise, considering the amount of contact that the police have with houseless people, is someone with some kind of subject matter expertise in. Uh, houselessness advocacy and services, um, I think would be really, really useful to this board, both in terms of um, the work that it's going to be doing accountability wise, but also having that expertise available as the board is stood up um, in terms of creating an accessible system to people uh, who are houseless. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Any other um, feedback, comments? Uh, can we move on to restrictions? Uh, restrictions, um, and these are um, what will, what could uh, prevent someone who applies uh, to be a board member from not qualifying. So um, this is directly from charter section two, uh, 
1003, restrictions on board membership. People currently employed by a law enforcement agency and their immediate family members are not eligible for service on the board. People who were formerly employed by a law enforcement agency are not eligible for service on the board. And then board members cannot be members of any other uh, city of Portland advisory group. Um, and this is a public comment that we received um, for today's meeting. Thank you, Co-Chair Teresa. Um, do we have any comments, feedback, questions, or any point of, thank you, Cherie? Commissioner Cherie? Thank you, um, I'll get this. Uh, it was brought up also, I think during the public comment about, or maybe it's just something that I was thinking of and it didn't actually get said, but considering the restrictions, I don't know if it would be something to maybe consider having a restriction. Um, like, would a district attorney or a prosecutor type position be considered law enforcement under this um, meaning of who would be restricted? Um, because one of the conversations that was had was, I forget the gentleman's name, um, I'm sure it's written down, but um, I took it away with me, it was that on this board, we really want to not encounter um, like a person that could be too close to law enforcement and corruptible in some way. Like for example, let's say that the district attorney, um, the prosecutor and the police have had a history of working together. And um, so, okay, we can't have a cop on the board, but how about we can have a prosecutor that sees things that wouldn't potentially find a policeman guilty of a, a crime. Um, so I, th I think it's something food for thought that um, prosecutors, district attorney, um, these kind of positions, maybe there's a potential that we would want to restrict that as well. Thank you, Commissioner Cherie. Um, Commissioner Tirsa, co-chair. Um, and yeah, in response to Sheree's comment, I I do um, I do like that feedback, and um, we can also include some of that language on here that we would like to see. Um, yeah. Thank you, Co-Chair Teresa, um, Commissioner Casey. So I would be interested, this seems like it's almost getting into potentially a legal question. So I would be interested to hear if our staff has considered this or if not, if it would be worth considering what the literal sort of legal definition of law enforcement agency is, since this is actually something that is coming out of the charter itself. Um, so just to get a, get a sense of what our restrictions are. I will say that my feeling is that the intention of the, the measure that passed this um, was when you were saying you don't want somebody from a law enforcement agency to serve on the board is to create sort of a bright line between law enforcement and this um, board and that someone who works in a place like a district attorney's office blurs that line a little bit. And I think even just going beyond that intention, I think it's important for this board to kind of be beyond reproach, um, to not have anyone be wondering, am I getting a fair shake in front of this board? Um, because there are potentially people who are sort of friendly with the people who are going to be brought in front of it for accountability. And I say this as a person who is a former prosecutor and thus would not be eligible if we had a policy that said you could not have former prosecutors on the board. Um, but I think that would be a good policy. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Staff? Thank you. Um, so just thank you for the helpful question in the uh, Q&A. Um, we do have from Oregon state law uh, definitions that a law enforcement agency means a district attorney's office. Um, so this is a uh, 
a definition in Oregon state law. Um, and, and I think the relevant part here is section two. I, I don't know that it uses the phrase law enforcement officer anywhere, but um, this may be helpful to, um, yeah. To look at, and it, it may also be helpful to consider having a definition that is clear about that um, for the purposes of the commission and the city code, because this is a state law definition. Um, and, and to Commissioner Casey's question, uh, happy to forward that along to the city attorney's office and get a, a, a read on what is uh, possible here. So, and this may not be the only place it's defined in state law either, so that's notable as well. Thank you, staff. Do we have any more comments, feedback, questions? Seeing that there are no hands raised, may we move forward? Yes, we can move to the next um, section. And so there's some overlaps on these. These are also for uh, qualifications. Um, so two potential models for qualifications of the Oversight Board. Uh, one, board representation model. The board should be representative of the community in the following ways. X number majority, all board members should be from a traditional over police communities, uh, BIPOC economically marginalized, people with mental illness. Uh, board should be geographically representative um, and a police oversight board does make sense to have equal representation for the West Hills versus North East Portland as an example. A uh, board should contain subject matter expertise in the following subjects, lived experience with criminal justice system, community organizing, legal, homeless, um, homeless supports, services, and et cetera. Pros of this model leaves flexibility for selection of members who may be a good fit for the board, but not fit a specific seat. And then cons, Without specific mandates or representation, city council may try to find ways to get around making the board truly diverse uh, representative. And then uh, number two, the designated seat model. The board will have designated seats representing specific groups, areas of expertise. Five seats uh, will be filled by people from traditionally over police communities. One seat each will be filled by people from each geographical city council district. One seat filled by a homeless service provider, one by a civil rights lawyer, et cetera. And then pros, guarantees a certain level of representation. Cons, very rigid. Also, how do you account for intersectionality? Example, a person from an over police community who is also from a certain district or also a service provider. Thank you, Co-Chair Teresa. Do we have any comments, feedback, questions, or need any type of point of clarification? Commissioners. Uh... Commissioner Cherie. Um, I just wanted to be really clear about this part of it. Um, in other situations, I like, for example, somebody wanting to run for governor, mayor, even city council, it's the language is really clear. You have to be an Oregonian and you have to be an Oregonian for a certain amount of time. So my concern with us in, in this one would, in this particular little su section here, is that we would want to be clear that this person is an Oregonian, um, not just that they have a PO box listed for Beaverton, Oregon, um, that they reside in the state um, and have been a resident for some period of time. We don't want to be too restrictive, but we also don't want you know somebody coming in from another state and finding themselves on this board because they've lived here two weeks and now they represent that neighborhood. 
Thank you, Commissioner Cherie. Um, Co-Chair Obi. Um, a couple of points. Uh, first point is to respond to Commissioner Cherie. Uh, thanks for the statement. I do address part of that in a the next subsection, I believe, about kind of like volunteerism um, based on the civic life um, definition. Um, so we'll definitely talk about that, and uh, I think we agree. Um, and then number two, yeah, I, I really like the the kind of the what's written the pros and cons section. It's like with this designated seat model, there is a certain rigidity to this. It's just tough, you know. If you the, just as an example, like if you used the demographic or like ethnic makeup of Portland to like fit a certain board, well, there's there's a higher percentage of certain groups versus others, which might not necessarily be what the board is trying to encompass versus over, over police communities historically, that's a different, a completely, that's a partially different makeup um, in this sense. So it's, it is, it is tough. I would be very interested to hear what the whole commission has to say about this too. I don't think that necessarily designated seat model is, I don't, I don't think it's wrong. Um, I just think it's very tough and like it'll end up being vague. I understand the vagueness leads to interpretation by other people that might not fit what you initially intended, but it's like, you don't want to be exclusionary to be inclusionary in a way, in kind of a weird sense. Right, but no, thank, thanks for writing this. I think it's a very good discussion. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi, Commissioner Casey. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've been thinking about this question a lot um, and I feel like I am somewhat of a, a coming to this process late and not having been involved in the part where we were looking at other um, jurisdictions, I feel like I'm at something of a disadvantage. Um, just looking at the language that we have in our sort of like comparable jurisdictions model, um, it seems like some of the sort of like places that say that the board should be representative of over-policed communities or the board should be geographically representative, things like that. Um, you run into a problem, and I don't know if this is actually a problem they run into in practice, um, but I imagine there could be a problem of it sort of being an honor system of being like having in code, like you should have representation from X, but not saying how much. So you could run into a situation where it's, you know, like if it's a 15 person board, maybe 10 people are from over policed communities. And then the next year, oh, well, we only have eight people from over policed communities, but that's still, you know, feel like it's good representation and then you just sort of fluctuates or goes down depending on sort of all sorts of things. So that's one of the reasons why I kind of was thinking about sort of that designated seat or at least having like a hard number of saying like X percentage of the board or X number of seats are going to be filled by people from over policed communities. Um, and you're going to have like one or two people with such and such experience and then I think the way that you could potentially get around that being too rigid is to then have some sort of open seats where you say these seats are for this those seats are for that and then you have a certain number of seats that are like for people who are going to be good on this board but don't need don't fit into any of the sort of ideas that we had as we went in because I think there will be some people who have expertise that it's like oh that would be great but we didn't think of it when we de designed this board um so yeah and then the other thing is the geographical question is one that I keep getting hung up on because I think that um particularly since the um sort of redrawing of the city council is looking really at having more geographical representation. I think it's important to have that discussion be a part of this as well. But at the same time, I do think it makes sense from like a democracy perspective to have the people who are electing city councilors have sort of equal representation across the city. But then when you're looking at people who are having sort of a voice in policing, um, I think you have to kind of look at where where is the most police activity happening and does it make sense to give people who don't really interact with the police equal representation to people who do um and so where i land is i kind of think that just making sure that people who are members of over policed communities are properly represented on this kind of works out the geographical issue on in its own way um but i'm very open to further discussion on that. I just think it's a hard hard needle to thread if you're trying to do representation in like eight different ways um, 
and you'll wind up with like we can't find somebody from North Portland who also is a lawyer who also like you know it's a it's a conundrum. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Commissioner Shuri. Taking off on what Obi said and also what Commissioner, sorry, Commissioner Obi and Commissioner Casey said, um, I, I'm just gonna comment that I do want us, I do want to take a lot of care with this particular thing that we don't make it so rigid that a person who is houseless would never appear on this type of a board. But we also have to take into account, um, we don't, how to say this correctly without, I'm thinking about when I learned that there was such a small number of people that actually applied for what we're doing right here today. Um, if you had asked me how many people did I think would apply to be on the Portland Police Accountability Commission, I would have thought there would have been thousands of applications, like people all over the state clamoring to be part of this, but it was a relatively small number. Um, I think Samir said just over 100. And I worry that if we make it very rigid, this type of a board might not have huge numbers of, of applicants, it, it, even initially, it, it might grow. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is we don't, we want to be mindful of the rigidity, um, but we also want good representation. Thank you, Commissioner Sheree. Staff? Yeah, just wanted to clarify that, that uh, part of the the role of the PAC is to establish criteria, but there is also this particular portion here that ensures that it is an ongoing conversation, um, which is something that I think when when this uh, text has been, this excerpt of text has been discussed, it, it this later part of the sentence has been often what gets discussed, but there's also that the board shall make provisions to ensure, which means that it's not solely a code and council responsibility, um, which is the portion that the PAC is involved in in setting that up. That is, that's not to say it's not your responsibility, it, it is, but there's uh, just wanted to flag that part of it. And then the other thing that may be notable is that with um, uh, the PAC's membership, um, you have to live, work, worship, play, or go to school in uh, the city of Portland. Um, so there are people, for example, who may uh, reside in Gresham, but attend um, a Portland Community College uh, campus regularly and commute. Um, and there are probably 50 different hypotheticals like that that the commission should consider um, whether or not those uh, folks should be able to serve um on, on it um yeah just wanted to flag that thank you thank you staff do we have any more comments questions feedback okay may we move forward please it's okay for us to move forward yes thank you moving forward These are my notes, but you can, I think we discussed a lot of the stuff, so we can actually just move forward to three. Oh, yeah, and uh, three is my section. Awesome. Um, so this is a recruitment and appointment process, including representation. Um, I'll just go these one by one in some points. So number one, members of the board shall live, work, play, attend school, or worship in the city of Portland for at least 12 months. Any comments, feedback, suggestions? May we move forward to two? And okay. Number two. Um, um, so number two, uh, board members assisted by a community outreach staff member shall have 
uh, shall be available uh, to further recruitment efforts for vacant board positions. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Um, I know an issue that has come up in some of the discussions around the new city council districts is the question of people who rent and the fact that they sometimes move around more than people who own their own houses. Um, so my, I guess the thing that I would just flag is for the live, work, play, attend school or worship in the city of Portland for at least 12 months, we would want to clarify sort of if the where where the clock starts and where it stops so like if someone lives in portland at the time that they're appointed um but then gets a new job in salem or moves to gresham or whatever um we would i get and i guess this goes into sort of the later question of continuing appointment to the board um it would sort of be a question of when how long do they stay on the board and uh how, how sort of attenuated does your connection to Portland need to be? I mean, if there's somebody who's been working on the board for two years and then moves somewhere else but is still engaged, do we want to say, like, you need to stop serving on the board immediately? Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Um, Co-Chair Obi. Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Casey. Definitely a great, great point too. I slightly address that later on too, with like moving or like prolong versus you know indefinite absences. But it is, it is tough, you know. And like, we want to be careful about. This is one of those things we don't want to exclude anyone who like, they feel like a Portlander, but you know, moving away. It's like, oh, I'm going to serve in the military. It's like there has to be some sort of protections for people who want to be a part of this, as well as um. I think the alternates, um, which is going to be slightly discussed and probably hashed out later on, but having alternate members um, too who might be able to fill in for people who leave for a little bit but want to come back and want to serve and have shown they can. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Do we have any more comments, questions, feedback, suggestions, recommendations? Okay, seeing that there are none, um, may we move forward? Sure. Um, number three, in addition to seated board membership positions, alternate members should be recruited and appointed in the case that there are vacancies for both short and long-term absences. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Uh, you have more that you would like to add to? Yeah, I, I have a chronic issue of saying should instead of shall. Um, this has been noted for weeks now. Um, I think that's technically a shall, but so be it. Thank you. Do we have any other comments, feedback, suggestions, questions? Seeing that there are none. Maybe Commissioner Sophia, Commissioner Sophia's hand is raised. Oh, I can't see her. <laughs> okay, I see her now. Okay, Commissioner Sophia, thank you. I'm trying to stop the singing right now <laughs> behind me. I'm sorry. Thank you for keeping me quiet, Maya, so I can talk. Um, I have a uh, just a question, sort of comment. Do um, on me. The number three. Um, when you say alternate uh, alternates, so what does that mean? I mean, is it? Is it a, I'm trying to get the understanding of how that's going to function, that's all. Hey, put Um, hey, hey, Sophia. Um, I would intention to function as if someone has, and we'll get to this later on in the removal section, but if someone has a foreseeable absence, um, health reasons, military service, um, can't be in the area and need someone to step in for a prolonged period of time, um, maybe wagering around like six months or so, um, an alternate who has applied in a very similar process and gone through the same exact screening and um, maybe not quite referral to the new city council, but all the screening processes would be available to step in and do the same 
um, onboarding process to become a board member if um, if necessary, just so that the I mean I expect there to be a, a fair amount of work for these board members and fair amount of subcommittee membership. We wouldn't want too many of them to lose numbers in a for a long time without having the foresight to regain membership. Yeah, thank you. Commissioner yeah. Sophia. Yeah, thank you. Um co-chair OB. I, I would just try and I understand how it take place. Oh my sorry about that. Um, that's it. Thank staff. Yeah, um, this is a so alternates can be used in a lot of different ways. So, uh, you know, co-chair Obi, uh, that that explanation is is like a very specific way that could very easily happen. Um, I, I noticed in the Q and A there was a, a reference to one of the commissions that was just appointed, the Government uh, Transition uh, Advisory Committee G GTAC. Um, and in that they had uh, members who are appointed, as well as uh, alternates who were uh, able to serve on and expected to serve uh, on uh, subcommittees. Um, and then they also had reserve alternates who are essentially there to be trained up and just ready on a, a, a you know on a moment's notice. And there have been several committees on this issue area. In the you know that some of which still exist in Portland, some of which uh, don't anymore, um, and they've all tried different alternate things, and and each model has uh, pros and cons to it that may be worth considering. So just wanted to flag that it's you know that if you ask an alternate to participate, then there's an upside, which is that they're familiar with the content that they've been working on it, and they're ready to jump in in the event that there's a um, a vacancy in two three months. They're they're effectively on the job training for for two to three months the the downside to it is um that sometimes there isn't a vacancy in two or three months and they're expected to serve uh without even you know it's it's hard enough to be a volunteer but they wouldn't even necessarily have a vote um so there's uh limitations associated with with that too and and i'm sure any other model you could look at would have different um positives and negatives but yeah, that I guess to answer the question in the Q and A, that's that's something that would need to be discussed as a separate question, um, as well. And that's that's not in any way an argument against alternates, by the way, um, because there's there's upsides to having them versus not as well. So, Commissioner Casey, I believe you had your hand raised. Nope, not me. Commissioner Sophia uh, does. Commissioner Sophia. <laughs> Commissioner Sophia? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I, I do think that this, that particular topic needs to be looked at in more detail. I, um, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot to go through on that. Thank you. Well, we have some entertainment tonight. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any comments or questions, suggestions? Uh, Commissioner Sophia, you still have your hand up? You still have something you'd like to add? Make sure I'm going to pan over again. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. May we move forward? Co Chair Obi? Sure. Um, and thank you uh, for everyone who's like participating in the Q and A. Um, we'll definitely make sure that things are get answered there too. But I'll move forward for now. Um, successors, this number four. Successors to an unexpired term shall be appointed by approval of council for the remainder of the term. Any comments? Questions? Suggestions? Okay. Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Uh, number five, recruitment efforts for the new board 
should include, but not be limited to, free or paid advertisements on television, radio, print, or digital media directed at the eligible public. I'll say the eligible public. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the city of Portland from my, uh, the definition of volunteer, but at the eligible public. And then um, I wrote subsection A, should clearly these advertisements should clearly state that these are not police bureau or full-time city of Portland positions, um, even if they're on websites linked to or um, in like similar places where things are posted for any sort of group, it should pretty much state that these are independent as one of the charter goals is to maintain independence of the new board. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Do we have any comments, questions, recommendations, suggestions? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward to six? Sure. At minimum, committee staff shall solicit applications to fill vacancies in the committee's membership with the help of, uh, with the help from Office of Community and Civic Life, the seven neighborhood coalition offices, mayor and commissioner's offices, PPB advisory committees, and the general public. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Any comments, questions, suggestions, feedback um, on six? Okay, I see a hand raised. Staff? Thank you. Yes. So uh, as you, you may note from the uh, citation or from the use of the word committee, this is um, city code as it currently is written um, related to the citizen review committee, as is the next section. Anytime you see the 3.21, it's going to either be the city code for the CRC or the police review boards. Um, and one of the things that uh, may come up in the future is that, um, and, and this will partially be resolved in this phase under the oversight staff subcommittee and partially in the next phase perhaps. But in terms of understanding where the new uh, oversight board will sit in the city's org chart, there may be another bureau that is also a good fit in addition to um, the Office of Civic Life or any of the other groups that that um, may uh, have uh, be soliciting membership for advisory groups in general and may host advisory groups um, in addition to PPB, for example, right now, the Community Safety Division hosts this advisory group and also two others. So um, there may be another entity that is um, recruiting essentially members on police focused um, advisory groups. Just uh, wanted to make sure that was uh, flagged. Thank you, Steph. Um, Commissioner Sophie, Sophie, Sophia, I'm sorry. Well, yes, um, I was going to ask a question about um, that uh, number six. Yeah, yeah. number six, sorry. Um, so I guess I'm trying to form my question now. Um, those groups that are listed, um, is that going to be an inclusive group? or exclusive group, maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Can there be other groups? I mean, um, it just says, and the general public. So is that general public encompass other groups as well? That's my question, sorry. Co-chair Obi? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, I just, and sorry to put at, at a minimum, but no, we want, I, I, it would be great if, the board had many things, including like, like when referencing from the uh, line above, we had multiple different groups, different media, um, different areas to reach as many Portlanders in quotation marks um, to serve on this board too. So this is definitely not an inclusive list of groups. It's kind of a, a copied list of groups. Okay, thank you. I was just wondering if we could include, guess that verbiage did you just use in there? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi and Commissioner Sophia. Do we have any other comments, 
feedback, suggestions, questions? Seeing that there are no hands raised, may we move forward, Co-Chair Obi? Sure, thank you. Um, number seven, the board will create a nominating committee to refer applicants for board membership to the city council for appointing. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Any comments, suggestions, feedback, questions? To number seven. Seeing that there are no hands raised, may we move forward? Commission, Co-Chair Obi? Sure. Um, num number eight, the new board's members shall be appointed by the city council. The mayor, while not directly voting for the appointment of nominees, can forward any suggestions or concerns to the city council. Um, the reference point was San Diego City, um, in which the whole council approves their board members, the board's members. Um, the caveat to the statement that I wrote is that this was under the expectation that this new board will start when the new committee or after the new commission or new city government style starts. Um, conceivably, if it started super early, then this statement would be just pushed back to when it does start and the city council as it is would vote um, in a sense. Thank you, Commissioner Obi. I mean, Co-Chair Obi. Um, do we have any comments, feedback, suggestions, questions? Staff? Just a quick note under the charter, um, the uh, this is already written in there, just so uh, it is It is not uh, a change in any way from the charter text. Just wanted to flag that. Thank you for that point of clarification, Steph. Do we have any comments, feedback, suggestions? Seeing that there are no hands raised, may we move forward to number nine, co-chair co Obi. Sounds good. Um, number nine, council shall review applications of nominees um, to the committee and vote whether to approve each appointment. Any comments, feedback, questions, suggestions? To nine. Seeing that there are, no, yes, um, Commissioner Casey. Sorry, it was late to my button. Um, I just think that we might want to um, include some kind of timeline on this or consider including some kind of timeline on this. Um, so people aren't just kind of left hanging um, once their uh, nomination has been submitted, um, give council some number of meetings or number of weeks or months to bring it up for a vote up or down. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Do we have any more comments, feedback, suggestions, questions? Seeing that there are none, the time is now. 804, I think this is a good time for us to take a break. Well, well now it's 805. So see you all back in about 10 minutes, say about 815. Thank you. Moving Would you like right to get started? Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, moving right along. I'm turning it over to Co-Chair Obi. Okay. Um, so yes, we did discuss number nine. So we went through this whole section. Um, number four wasn't submitted. Um, I know we it's that's gonna be a 
pretty lively discussion, I think, about how board members are compensated and then whether or not it's a kind of per case basis, payment for a subcommittee, payment overall. Um, so we'll have to table that until next time, but I'm sure we'll be have discussions in between. Um, and then five also was one of the ones that wasn't um, uh, wasn't submitted yet, but the onboarding process and training. Um, and you know, then now that I'm thinking about it, we've probably put in parentheses like, or my, if I was thinking of my notes, putting like alternates as well um, as a little dot phrase or a sub phase too. But um, um, should new board like be able to review cases and kind of start in a process like and kind of like have a transition phase for when CRC when the lights turn off as a one member um, suggested it and this new board starts um, and then like also talking about alternates how they do that as well so ma major group of people kind of learning how the process generally goes thank you co-chair Obi do we have any um, additional information or comments questions that we'd like to add at this time. Any points of clarification from staff? Okay, great. Uh, Commissioner Sophia. I just wanted to say uh, the compensation one, of course, and you just kind of went over, it's a little complicated. <laughs> and I think I'm, uh, and I, I'm on that particular one. Um, so I'll be looking into that and hopefully um, I shouldn't say hopefully. Um, before the end of this week, I should I should have a draft. Um, but I do have another partner. Um, I can't remember his name. My my brain went dead. Was working on that with me. But um, we'll get together because we haven't had a chance. We just sent the email back forth. So good for the email that's coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Um, Commissioner Cherie. Yes, thank you. Um, just kind of clarifying. Um, so there was a meeting on March 9 and people accepted, um, um, like they accepted that they would look into having possible answers for this. That's when all that was determined. I'm, I apologize, I'm coming in after the fact. Uh, no need to apologize. Uh, glad, first off, glad to have you. Um, secondly, I heard your uh, email wasn't was one hundred percent up and running, so all good. Um, hopefully, we can like regroup maybe uh, this or slightly afterwards. And if any couple of them or a few of them need to be looked at again or a deeper dive, we be glad to have you work on even this one thing. But no need to be to apologize at all. Thank you, Co Chair Obi and Commissioner Cherie. Do we have any additional comments, suggestions, questions, point of clarification? Seeing that there are none, um, Co-Chair Obi, may we move forward? Yeah, and I think I'll hand it over to uh, Co-Chair Tiesa uh, for this section. Thank yeah. you. Co -chair Tiesa. We'll take on this section. Um, so uh, term lengths and renewability. One, the new oversight advisory board shall serve at least three years, um, or members should say members of the new oversight advisory board shall serve at least three years. Uh, number two, the oversight board will serve with staggered terms. A, the new members can be onboarded by existing members. Uh, B, the work of existing members is not interrupted. Example, one third of members will on board while two third will remain as they continue to serve their terms. Three members whose term will expire can apply to renew their term approximately three months prior to the expiration date. A three months gives the board and necessary staff time to plan to fill the vacancy or existing members can apply to renew their term one time and will be considered for the position. Applying will allow the board and necessary staff to evaluate the board members renewal application. Thank you, Commission Co-Chair Teresa. 
Teresa, do we have any comments, feedback, suggestions, recommendations, or point of clarification for the section that was covered by co-chair Teresa? Okay, I see a hand is raised. Um, Commissioner Casey. I just wanted to say this seems really well thought out and I think it looks great, so I support it. Thank you, co-chair Casey. Any other feedback, comments, questions, suggestions, recommendations? Um, Commissioner Sophia? Um, I'd also like to agree that I thought this was this is really well thought out. And um, I was my question was, uh, if a member decides to renew, is there any different criteria? Like, say, if there's someone new applying, you know, is there any? How, how will that be done? Like if there's like, say, if they're they're their term is up, they want to reapply, and then we have other applicants. How, how will that be done? Is there going to be some kind of preference, or do we not get to that part yet? Co-chair Teresa? Um, I don't think this, well, this section doesn't mention any of that, but that's a, actually a good point. Like, how would we how should the uh, new, oh, how should members who want to renew uh, be evaluated? Um, yeah, that'd be something great to include as a subsection to this. Thank you. Do we have any others, any other comment, questions, feedback? Um, Commissioner Sharif? Yeah, I just have a comment, really, a food for thought about this section of it, especially like I really love the way it's, it has been very thoughtfully looked at. But one of the things that I'm very concerned about with police officers, actually, is that they they get a certain number of years into the job and without making like broad sweeping generalizations. Um, I feel like there could be burnout. They could become numb. It's emotionally taxing. Um, like they're on high alert. Uh, they see horrible things all day long. Um, and I think that plays into some of the problems why we are where we are right now. I mean, obviously that has to play in. They're human too, right? And with that said, these people on this board could experience some of the very same things. Um, it, it's just food for thought that you could experience burnout in, uh, like, let's just say they had a really bad year. Like, let's say they had a George Floyd of Portland over and over and over again, like, God forbid, but what if? Uh, lots of publicity, spotlight, um, you know, media attention, these kind of things affect somebody emotionally and they could do good things and bad things. It could cause lots of people to want to be on the board or it could cause nobody to want to be on the board. Um, just food for thought about it. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cherie. Uh, let's see, we have um, Commissioner Sophia. I'd just like to um, just say I hear you, Sherry. Um, I, 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 when compensation comes into play, I was thinking about that. And you know, before you came, we as a as a commission, we talked about. Um, a lot of that kind of emotional wear and tear um, um, with the other current boards that are serving right now. And, you know, just trying to find out how 
to manage that. Um, if you have any ideas, please let me know because uh, part, part of one of the thoughts I had for compensation, which I didn't look into, but I did ask around is, um, you know, emotional support when I call that, when I say I'm seeking medical, but also, you know, it's just very taxing. And um, to find a way to manage that, um, that I guess we can say can do it by law. Um, as commission members, we're city employees without any benefits. Um, so uh, I did speak to someone who worked for the state and I mentioned um, health insurance, you know, at the very minimum and, um, you know, for mental health care, or at least, I don't know what the state has employee. I know the government has employee, um, I can't remember. It's, it's a little program with they, they kind of contract with to do all sorts of little things like um, um, employee assistance program, I think is what it's called. And they'll give you like so many free sessions uh, for therapy or whatever. So anyway, I appreciate your thought on that. Because um, I, I was even thinking about the three year terms, it doesn't seem like a lot. But, you know, like you said, if you have a couple, let's just say you have two, two bad years, whether it's what's going on or what's going on personally, um, you know, you might lose them that third year, for sure. Um, so I don't know, that was a suggestion for now, but I don't, I won't say three years is too long. I just say there's a lot of things to consider in three years. So that's my comment. Thanks guys. Thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Do we have any other comments or feedback that we would like to share? Staff? I also saw Commissioner Sherry's hand up, or Sheree's hand up as well. I wasn't sure who would want to go first. I, I do, thank you. Um, maybe this is something, um, this is for everybody, but I know Sophia, you're listening. Um, maybe this is something along that goes into the compensation aspect of it. Um, I've often thought to myself, I, I don't know if this is true. And once again, I'm so new, I apologize. I don't know if police are forced to take time off. Um, I know that certain other professions, doctors, um, uh, uh, EMTs, the people that, you know, firemen sometimes, um, if they get into a situation where somebody thinks that they have had some trauma, then they probably are forced to take a vacation kind of thing. But maybe in the compensation that we're looking at, um, they could have a certain number of time off days, weeks, or, and this may play into having an alternate or whatever. But, you know, maybe each staff person um, or each board member would have a month off or two weeks off or it, I don't know, food for thought, something, gather your mind after a very trying situation. And trying could mean one thing for one person and something totally different. Another person might not feel challenged at all. Um, so maybe this is something to put into the compensation piece, which hasn't been done yet. Thank you, Commissioner Sharif, for that feedback. Um, staff? Yeah, so I uh, was going to say the exact same thing that this, the, the EAP, the Employee Assistance Program types of the, the wraparound that isn't purely financial compensation, but is ultimately the, the sort of what would be benefits if it was an employee type of role might make a lot of sense to put there. The other, the other thing that may be worth considering is that uh, in another section that is not yet um, developed or hasn't been discussed, I should say, is uh, in the first section, um, which will be about the size of the board, but also the size of the panels. Um, <clears throat> it is theoretically possible that if there is a very large scale event that would require for the oversight board to address it, that every member would be affected, but it is also theoretically possible that it would affect a subset thereof. And there would be other members of the oversight board who wouldn't be on that panel. 
Um, and so it would affect them, but not in the same way as someone who was on the panel. So that's just something to keep in mind as um, as you go. And that that's um, probably the secondary part of it. Um, the primary part is, as Commissioner Cherie mentioned, the um, compensation package, which might include what Commissioner Sophia mentioned, like any employee assistance program or something like that. Thank you, staff. Any other comments, feedback, questions? Okay. Seeing that there are none, Co-Chair Teresa, are we, may we move forward? Okay, number five, to prevent a number of vacancies at a time, members whose terms have expired are welcome to serve on the board until their replacement is appointed. A members shall wait no more than three months until their replacement is found. Uh, these members shall be given a definite timeline by necessary staff board members. Thank you, Co-Chair Teresa. Do you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, questions, or point of clarification? Seeing that there are no hands raised, may we move forward, Co-Chair Tiersa? Yeah, yes. I'm sorry, I think she's gonna pass it to me. Sorry, I'll take it. Okay. Co-Chair Elby? <laughs> um, all right, for number seven, removal requirements and process. Um, so number one, the new board has defined authority and criteria for discretionary removal or referral to the appointing authority for removal by a supermajority vote um, or two thirds of the members of the full board present. Um, the board may request that the city council remove a board member for good cause. Now I'm gonna, I'm going to read this because uh, just continuing on reading like what good cause would be. And the stars that I wrote are because it's discussion points and I didn't want to cement a full number, but good cause um, for removal includes um, unexcused absences, totaling, like excuse absences, um, totaling a certain number. Excused absences include unforeseen events, health reasons, being out of town, or conflicts of interest, um, major undisclosed conflicts of interest, plan move from the city of Portland for greater than six months. And we can asterisk there, like I guess, planned move or planned job change, um, planned change of worship, uh, things that would move you out of the volunteer criteria. Um, unmet part minimum participation or workload requirement. Breach of confidentiality, um, it ticks back to previous um, um, phases of work. Inactivity in board activities, including subcommittee work or hearing participation. And failure to complete mandatory training. And then I'll, B is a small, a much smaller sentence. I'll read that, then we can discuss. Um, other reasons for removal could include resignation, death, or incapacitation. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Do we have any comments, questions, feedback, suggestions, points of clarification? Co-chair Obi. Yeah, and as I wrote this, like, you know, especially with the absence totals, um, we'd want to know like kind of an estimate or um, a best guess on how many times, you know, each full new commission or new uh, board or subcommittees of boards are planning to meet, um, which would then be able to better hone us in on the absences because I imagine there will be a lot. And, I'm, and as we kind of mentioned, mentioned the previous section, we don't want to, put undue stress on someone's mental health by doing a job that's uh, doing a volunteer job that's already stressful and then having them feel like they're on their their heels about participation or being thrown off of something when honestly they are doing um a service to the city thank you co-chair obi any comments questions feedback staff 
I just wanted to flag um, a question that that we may ask the city attorney's office on this is is to what degree if this is of interest to the the members uh, that that may be asked is is um, to what degree it's necessary to have a number versus uh, you know absences being the the um, the threshold and then the oversight board will be able to establish its own bylaws uh, and may have a standard that is more suitable because it's also establishing how often it meets. So um, the, the downside of that is it's not in code um, explicitly numerically, but the upside to that is then it can be cohesively determined at the same time and in the same way that the number of meetings are determined. So it's, it's a trade-off that, that um, the subcommittee might be interested in pursuing or might not um, because it, you can see in, in part, uh, I guess, 1A1, 1A2, and also 1A5, there are, the, the idea is to ensure that there is sufficient membership participation to warrant taking up one of the finite number of slots on the oversight board. And uh, also there's the notice component of it um, in terms of the excused versus unexcused. So those are kind of cohesively one idea that might interact with uh, an unknown, which is how often things meet. Thank you, staff. Commissioner Sophia? Um, I just wanted to just um, agree with that comment because I, I, I thought of the same thing, but because we it wasn't finalized and I hadn't thought through it, um, how to do that. But I, I, I think there's some consideration that we need to take um, uh, about his comments. Uh, depending on how many meetings. I mean, if it's one meeting and you have 50, or if it's two meetings and you have 50, right? It doesn't really mean a whole lot, but, you know, if it's, it, it just depends on the, 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 the workload is where I'm going. So, because if you do it up front without taking into consideration the workload, um, it, it, it may not work out so nice. So that's it, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Are there any other co comments, questions, suggestions, any points of clarification? Seeing that there are none, may we move forward? Sure. Thank you. Co-Chair Obi. Number two, final removal of a board member outside of their full term end date will need a vote by city council following quorum rules of city council. Thank you, um, Co-Chair Obi. Are there any comments, questions, feedback, suggestions, point of clarification? Seeing that there are none at this time, May, I move, may we move forward? Sure. And then the final um, statement number three, a board member seeking public office shall resign the seat at the time they announce their candidacy or file their petitions, whichever happens first. The individual can choose to apply for the board if they no longer run for office or end their term in government. Thank you, Co-Chair Obi. Comments, feedback, suggestions, questions, any points of clarification? I see uh, Commissioner Sophia. Thank you. I'm, I'm playing a, 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 a what if scenario um, in my head. Um, what if they do run for an office and they're not selected? Um, do they get to resume or do they have to, you know, I don't know. Do they get to resume their, their work on the board if they are not selected or how will that happen? That's, that's another thought. Because it can happen because you run doesn't mean you're going to win. Yeah, uh, I was absolutely. Um, I figured because like these processes, when you um, say you're gonna run for office can last like a year, like when you file our petitions, it can be a very long time, like a year, a year to just under two. Um, I wrote this up in my head that they would resign and then they can reapply. 
So if it's a short-lived thing or they withdraw reapplication, then they can hopefully quick, um, quick, uh, a quick application process for them or a quick decision process for them. But I, I presume re actual resignation um, so that there's no uh, presumed conflicts of interest. Thank you, Commissioner Sophie and Co-Chair Obi. Commissioner Sheree? Yeah, um, that gentleman who spoke at the in-person um, community feedback, his words just keep playing over in my head. A, how would we know if they had conflicts of interest? How would we know that? Um, and B, how do we prevent corruption from happening on this board? so that we don't have to get to the point where we would have to request removal and voting and these kinds of things. Is this addressed somewhere else, Obi, or somebody? Um, no, thank you. That's, a, that's a great question. Um, you know, in my, my profession, I presume conflict of interest, we always state in the beginning of anything that we say. Um, I imagine the application process, um, there would be a generalized forms or generalized like questionnaires about you know are you married to someone who does x or did you do this in the past um and then uh this is one thing that we discussed when we did access information about like background checks of people because they had access to sensitive information um or possible database information from the city or state or even sometimes shared shared federally like those people some mem some people, either staff or board membership, having um, having to get screened through a background check. Um, I think there's going to be some rigor to what is looked at when someone joins a board, but some of it also is going to be just honesty and um, self-reporting too. I know that's tough, and I'm sure that a lot of the full commission will have something to say about that. But if someone's going to hide something small. Uh, they, they probably do. I think that happens today in a lot of facets of life. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Cherie? Yeah, um, I think the thing that he was more concerned with is as this board develops, let's say the person's been on the board for a year, year and a half, two years, five years, 10 years, it they become where... Um, corrupted, so to speak, like they could be bought off. Those were his words. Um, and this is what I would, this is what's on my mind. But it just, there it is. Thank you, Commissioner Sheree, Commissioner Casey. So I feel like the check on that is one, the city council, being able to make appointments and potentially take people off of the board, but then the other board members as well. Um, and I feel like co-chair Obi has written that into the process that they have and the specific things that someone can potentially be um, removed for. And I like the fact that, uh, I forget the exact language, but it was sort of deliberately concealing a conflict of interest. Because I will say from my experience in the Oregon legislature, there are very real situations in which a person can not realize they have a conflict of interest or not realize that something could be perceived as a conflict of interest. And you don't want that to sort of be able to be politicized to pick people off of the board that people have quarrels with and such. So I think that we will need to dive a little bit more deeply maybe into some definitions of what conflicts of interest are. Because um, this is an, an area of public service law that has been, you know, there's decades of uh, precedence and work that's been done on what are and aren't conflicts of interest, uh, and it's still not necessarily a resolved question. Thank you, Commissioner Casey. Commissioner Sophia? I was going to say that, you know, I, I know the state has a, a board of ethics, which if, you know, if there's anything that you think may be possible, a conflict of interest um, that maybe should be referred to 
going to the board of ethics to see that because a lot of times you're right you just don't know i mean i've used um in, in my work the board of ethics to, to just question some of the things that i was doing it's like is this is this something that i should be doing it's the conflict of interest and um it, it works um so I mean, if anyone has any questions in on the board, they I think we should just make sure they understand that there's a board of ethics that can help resolve that if they need to. They have some questions, and like you said, sometimes you don't know, um, you don't realize it as well, um, and I think it just depends on the situation, right? Um, some are pretty blatant, some of them are oversight. So I guess we'll have to for the board figure out how to deal with that. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Sophia. Commissioner Tirsa, you did have your hand up at once. Um, do you, you still have a comment that you would like to add? Um, I was just going to say if we uh, if it makes sense uh, to possibly add a section um, under recruitment and appointment process where applications and applicants uh, could be screened by the board to possibly prevent a conflict of interest. Um, but then I don't know what that, like what that screening would look like. And this thought mostly came from like, if someone like with bad intentions, I don't know, someone, for example, like from uh, Proud Boys or something applied and like, we wouldn't, like the board wouldn't know that they are, but possibly through a screening, like um, that could be like a conflict of interest that could come up or. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner, Tier Co-Chair Tiersa. Staff? Yeah, so um, this is possibly something that fits in to the full commission's conversations. So I know that the most of the work of the commission, this phase of work has been assigned to one of the three subcommittees, but there is a definition section, um, which uh, in the in the council's charge to the commission, which includes 10 items or uh, nine items plus any other terms that the commission feels need to be defined. And two of those are going to get defined in the full commission. One is accountability and the other is independent judgment. And so uh, that might be uh, a place where this fits in or possibly just as another standalone definition to, to get it. And the reason um, I'm noting that is because the, the, the way that conflict of interest is generally defined with relation to um, within the city with relation to volunteers is is a fairly it is a narrower definition than how it's used colloquially and maybe that's a good thing and maybe that's a bad thing but it it, it may be something that the commission wants to assess um just a a flag it, it doesn't necessarily conflict of interest may be broader than just board membership so it may be something for the full commission to to tackle and and um full commission co-chairs can can certainly um figure out when might be best to do that Thanks, Steph. Um, Commissioner Sophia. I will say that, um, you know, I've signed quite a few conflict of interest um, documents for my work and things. And conflict of interest is that responsibility falls on the individual uh, and all of the work that I've done. It falls on the individuals to determine that knowing what they're doing, being vigilant is where I'm going with what you're doing and how you're doing it. And it's not, it, it's sort of the honor system. And at the same time, um, you know, if you're found, <laughs> if you found that you knowingly violated that, that could be a real problem, right? In all of my work, because um, there's a lot of stuff going on with the type of work I do. So anyway, long story made short, you know, you sign those agreements uh, and they, they leave that up to you to make sure that you don't do that. So that's why I was saying 
you know, when you sign that agreement, or at least when I sign that agreement, you know, if I see anything that looks that I think might be an issue, I always go to the the, the board of ethics. So I know we don't want people doing this intentionally, but generally those things come out and you're we're public officials and people know what you're doing <laughs> and um, never know. Um, there could be some bribery in that, as you say, um, we don't know, but it's generally um, uh, up to the individual to ensure that. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sophia. I think this is a good time for us to take public comment at this moment. We will now take open public comment on the issues the subcommittee is discussing on community members. Community members can also share their story about policing and police accountability. Subcommittees now allow members to the public to give public comments for up to three minutes in length. Please raise your hand in Zoom if you would like to speak. Um, we have Debbie and Dan would like to speak. Debbie? Hi, I'm Debbie Iona. I'm one of the commissioners. Um, I just wanted to talk about the, um, the term limits on board members. So the um, Citizen Review Committee right now, they do not have, they do not have uh, term limits. After they've served their term, if they want to renew, they reapply as you guys have envisioned in your draft. But what happens is, and I've actually served on the, the little, you know, there's a group that's made up of staff, former, I mean, uh, non-renewing CRC members, former CRC members, community members that evaluate the um, applications and then hold interviews. So what's, what's happened in the past is we have the people who are asking to renew and new people. And then we, we've looked at the whole, you know, who's on the CRC now, who is applying and which people would kind of fill out all of the diversity goals that there are for the board. And in terms of experience, demographics, all of that. And so um, kind of like the idea of not having term limits but having people reapply, but then they get considered along with everybody else who applies because there is there are some advantages to having a few people on the oversight board that have been there for a while, have a lot of experience, have institutional memory. And so a small segment of the full board, if they fall into that category, it's very helpful because otherwise you end up with the staff being the ones who have all of that. And it's nice to have a few board members who've been around a while and, and know what's going on. Plus, I think this is going to be a job that requires a lot of understanding of the processes. And so the longer you're there, the more familiar you'll be with the way things work and know the ins and outs of police bureau directives and how the process works. So just my suggestions. Thank you so much for your work. I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Um, Dan? Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, this is Dan Handelman. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm a member of the PAC. And thank you all for your good work today and leading up to today. Um, uh, my first comment may seem a little weird, but the uh, the other documents that we've generated, the sections had letters, and then underneath them were numbers. So as I was trying to take notes uh, to send to you later or what I was trying to put in the Q&A, I would say like 3 slash 9 instead of uh, what would have been C9 in the old document. So I wonder if you might consider using that scheme again. And two, just on behalf of uh, uh, my colleague on the commission, Charlie Michelle Wesley, um, I would urge you to put page numbers on your documents as well. Um, so uh, there was one thing uh, where uh, it talked about um, the city council making, uh, reading the applications before they appoint people. That comes directly from the existing city code. And um, I think it's crucial so that there, it's not just a rubber stamp um, from the city council of the nominees. Uh, I agree with Ms. Iona completely that even if, the, if, the, if there's gonna be a term, letter, it should be three terms and not two. So you can have people around for nine years. Right now, the uh, 11 members of the CRC have uh, 
respectively, these number of years of experience, eight, six, five, four, three, and then five people have two years and one person has only been for a year. So um, I think having the people around for a long time really helps with the continuity. And as uh, Ms. Iona was saying, understanding all these ins and outs. Um, uh, and I'm not sure why there, there was in our research, it said that people could stay on the board until they were replaced. And then there's a, a, a suggestion of a maximum of three months to wait that out. I, I don't I don't know that we need to put a maximum number on that. I understand some people might want to leave, um, but if the people can fill the seat until the, it's filled, I think that would be helpful for the whole community not to have an empty seat. Um, uh, there are real cases. Um, about people running for office in the CRC's history that had mixed um, mixed uh, ways that it was dealt with. I think it's a good idea to put something specific in the new code so that it's not very clear what the rules are supposed to be. Um, I think too that, again, going back to what Ms. Iona was talking about, that maybe you could say weight could be given to uh, existing members who are in good standing. And that way, you know, it's likely they'll be renewed, but if they did something, you know, inappropriate or if they, uh, if there's somebody who has the same skills and is new and um, might be able to fill in when when, when that person's starting to um, get burned out, um, that would be taken into consideration. Uh, and the last thing I want to, you to think about, and I'm surprised nobody brought this up, is is a conflict of interest a lawyer who has sued the city either in the past or currently uh, about police brutality, but they're not hearing the cases that they are involved in as lawyers in front of the board. It sort of seems like they, if the, if one of those cases came forward, they could step off, but I don't know if that should disqualify them from serving broadly. And I think that the city probably does. <laughs> so um, make sure to think about that. And thank you again for your time. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate your comments. And Debbie, thank you. Moving right along, I will pass this over for staff. Um, to go over next steps in the future drafting, uh, future drafting before the next meeting. Yeah, thank you. Um, so just before getting to next steps, um, just wanted to flag uh, that the Office of Civic Life handles most city advisory group applications processes, and they have said that it's in city policy that there's a maximum of eight years of consecutive service on a single uh, committee. I, I'm not certain whether that would a apply in this scenario. And B, they haven't, you know, they didn't give a specific citation, so we can't look at where that exactly exists and if there's any sort, if it is that um, cut and dry, um, or if there's nuance to it. Just wanted to to flag that that is um, something that they said exists in the policy, which I imagine would be like the PSF uh, type of documents um, or the administrative rules uh, adopted by bureaus. Um, so um, again, not certain if that applies, but that that is um, just something that was presented to us as if it applies. So um, yeah, with relation to next steps, the next meeting of this subcommittee is March 6th, sorry, April 6th, that is 10 days from today. Um, so the uh, that's the only one that's scheduled as of right now. There is a possibility of scheduling a future one beyond that um, if needed, and, and it may be. Um, that is gonna be a um, uh, an opportunity to look at the uh, revised version of this text, which would be uh, in the form of draft areas of agreement, as well as to add to it with additional uh, text for sections one, <clears throat> excuse me, sections one on uh, size of the board and panel sizes, section four on compensation, which would also include um, the advisory, the em employee assistance program type of benefits as well as the onboarding process and training, which is part five. So this would be uh, revising current text, incorporating new text, formatting it as per Commissioner uh, Dan's comments in the uh, public comment into a uh, format very similar to what you've seen before in previous areas of agreement. So um, with with co-chair's permission, wanted to ask if it, it was okay for members to look at the members of this subcommittee to look at the sections that they've already worked on and update them based off of what has been discussed today um, with the benefit of, of uh, or with the assistance of co-chairs after the fact to kind of combine it and make sure everything fits together, as well as for members who have not yet submitted text for sections um, one, four, and five to do so. 
And finally, if we can, um, because on March 9th, we didn't yet have subcommittee and commission member Sheree yet uh, to ask if, if Sheree could help in the sections that currently only have one person assigned to them. Does that seem like a, a, a good system to get from here through um, April 6th? Yeah, I think that's agreeable. Thanks. Okay, so that would mean if it's okay with Commissioner Cherie, um, and please please say so. If not that would mean uh, sections seven and eight uh, removal requirements and process, as well as quorum, which we didn't get a chance to talk about today, but will be on the agenda for the next uh, meeting. And then um, we'll be following up with our members who uh, haven't yet sent in text to get that. The goal would be to have this you know, by the end of this week, ideally, to try and uh, allow members part of the weekend to review everything, have it connected and, and sent out. But if it if it comes in um, as early as early, early next week, we'd be able to ensure that members are able to review the text going into the meeting. Um, so it's, it doesn't mean send it by 6.59 p.m. or whatever on Thursday of next week. It, it, it's, it's designed to have time to collate it, format it, recirculate it, and have members read the whole prior to coming into the, the conversation next Thursday. Um, yeah, does that work for everyone? Any any questions, comments, thoughts on that? Okay. Thank you, I'll pass it back over to uh, Commissioner, or to, sorry, to facilitator staff. Thank you, staff. At this time, we're going to um, go into the conclusion. This is the time for facilitators, co-chairs, and staff to summarize Summarize any items already brought up today which didn't fit into today's agenda. We'll recap those items here and use them in developing future agendas. We won't be using this time to add new items not previously mentioned or to discuss any items, but we'll use the li this list to develop future agendas so these items can be addressed. Recaps, garden plot, Co-chairs, do you have anything that you would like to add? I don't have anything I'd like to add. Uh, I think that's a productive day and uh, I'm definitely will look forward to submissions over the coming week and hopefully we can finish up uh, next week. Thanks. Co-facilitator, do you have anything yeah. you would like to add? I don't have anything for the garden plot at this time. Thank you, staff. Uh, one item, it's uh, the transition phase. Um, for the, the the initial board membership's ability to train with CRC uh, at the time they're appointed is is garden plot for uh, the fifth phase of work on uh, transition plan. Thank you. Thank you, staff. Oh, and sorry, the the potential of defining conflict of interest as a full commission as well. Um, or whether that fits in as its own agenda, or own definition, or part of the um, independent judgment one. Thank you. Thank you. Now we um, thank thank you all for joining us. As a reminder, you can now submit advanced public comment to the Police Accountability Commission via web form, voicemail, or postal mail. Thank you to all the members who had attended today's meeting and for your contributions today. Thank you also for the interpreters. Finally, thank you to the members of the community for attending and contributing your thoughts and questions. If you're not already signed up for email updates, please, please also sign up to receive updates from the PAC. The next meeting of, the sub, of this subcommittee will be Thursday, April 6th. It is now 9.06 and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you and have a good night.